All right, here we are on the wedding day filming checklist. This is the final component of this video, and this is all about the reception. Now, believe it or not, what follows the reception typically is the cocktail hour. Cocktail hour is that transition period from the time that the ceremony ends and the reception begins. Now, it is important to know where the photographer is at this time, because this is when the beauty shots and all the formals occur. It's going to be your responsibility to, with the gimbal to work closely with the photographer to capture some of the most dramatic and beautiful shots that we have. Now, the second shooter, what you're going to be focusing on is on cocktail hour. And what that looks like is you're going to go around just getting a few shots and maybe some well wishes just to get guests having a good time. That's your focus of this part. Now, I want to elaborate on a few things if you're the first shooter going for the formals. Now, one thing that may happen as well are family photos at this time. Your job is to make sure you're off to the side, just more so focusing on the candids. Do try to get the parents on this one and any other special relatives on this, such as grandparents or the bridal party and so forth. Now, when we go into the formals, which we also call here the beauty shots, it's critical that you get a minimum of 15 shots of this. And I mean 15 shots with 15 different angles. Now within those angles, try to do wide, medium, and tights. This is a critical time that you make sure you get right. Work and communicate closely with the photographer on this to make sure you are maximizing this time. Now in this time as well, within the pre-reception because the lighting's so beautiful, Typically, you should line yourself up and be ready to do drone shots at this time. Make sure you follow all the FAA regulations, such as not flying over people or on private property that we're not supposed to be on. Try to take off away from people and try your best not for them to see you because then they start pointing and acting weird and we don't need acting weird in the video. Now that cocktail are starting to die down, Typically coordinators or whomever will set aside some time for the photographer to go in and capture some pre-reception shots such as the establishing uh, miscellaneous details without guests in there. So there are some key things that you want to do if you're in the reception area in this time. You do want to make sure you get a shot of the cake, a simple wide shot of it, maybe a detail of the top tier of the cake and maybe if the knife or the fork has actually the couple's name engraved in it. Some other things to think about in the reception area are the flowers, sweetheart table, any type of unique signs, or any miscellaneous decor. Make sure you get some good detail shots of those things. One of the big things too is that you need to get audio set up. Now this can be a little tricky depending on who the DJ is because they may or may not allow you to plug into their feed. Now, if you can plug into their feed, we'll have a video on how to do that and make sure you watch that so that way you capture the best audio you can at this time. Now let's say you get a DJ that's a little hesitant of you plugging into their feed. What you need to do is do your best to capture the audio from either the camera or plug the surround sound on the H5. Try to place the H1 near some speakers so that way you can capture the audio from that. Now, worst case, couples will understand if the DJ is unreasonable on that. We do inform them of this that should that happen. But one thing you want to think about for the reception because it's going to be dark is lighting. As the reception is dark, lighting is a key component to making this look good. There are two ways that we light this. One, with the stationed spotlight, which is great for the toast or anything like that. The other is we'll put a panel on the gimbal so that way there's actual light on the gimbal. Now try your best not to point the light at people. Try to have it either pointing off to the side so you can bounce the light. Now let's talk about the main checkpoints of the reception itself. Usually what happens first is the announcing of the bridal party. They'll come down in any type of orderly fashion. Just make sure you get with a coordinator so you know where they're coming from. But it is critical that you get the next component, which is the announcing of the bride and groom. Now, make sure you're rolling continuously at this point and don't stop after they've come out because typically they'll have their first dance. And now make sure you film that in its entirety. The first shooter, make sure you were on that gimbal working around, you're out of the way, watch for photographers, and of course your second shooter. Now sometimes there are special welcomes 
done either by the bride or the groom or both. Make sure you capture that. Depending on who the coordinator or how the day is organized, there's usually a small break. Ideally, this might be the your time for a vendor meal break and when the couple eats and so forth. Don't get the couple eating. Nobody wants to be seen in a video eating their favorite chicken Caesar salad with a mouthful. Don't capture it. Now, the next part that typically follows is the mother-son dance and the father-daughter dance. Like the first dance with the bride and groom, capture those moments in their entirety. At some point, they're going to have toast. With that one, I would focus on keeping the camera stationary. So for example, your first shooter may be on a stationary camera pointing at the speaker. The second shooter can set up a camera that's focusing on the bride and groom, so that way you can capture their moments. Now make sure you capture every speaker, whomever it is. Make sure they're lit as best as possible and that the audio is working at this time. As the night is winding down, we're gonna have probably a cake cutting. So set up where you can see the couple and the cake. And then you wanna have a tight focusing on the actual cutting part and also the emotion of the bride and the groom at that moment. Now please make sure you're rolling continuously on this moment and make sure you communicate with whomever is involved. Now as the wedding is starting to die down a little, this is when they'll do the bouquet and garter toss. So your first shooter is typically going to be shooting a medium to tight on this one. And at first you'll be focusing on the bride if it's the bouquet toss or the groom if it's the garter toss. Now what's going to happen next is you're going to want your second shooter to have a wide so that way we can see who actually catches it and how big the crowd is. Everything is now starting to kind of get in the swing of things. It's a big party at this point. What is critical is that you just get some great shots of guests having a good time. Get them dancing, get the smiles, make sure you get the brides dancing, the grooms dancing. This is total candid moment. Focus on the wow, the ha, and awe moments here. Now, if you're a second shooter or assistant on this one, this is your best time to practice with the gimbal and maybe work with the first shooter to get some creative shots there may be a send off and they may have allocated time for that. Typically it could be something like a sparkler or a really cool car exit. If you are the first shooter, kind of assess the situation because each one of these are unique, but you as a first shooter should be focused on the moment. A second shooter, maybe you can focus on establishing in the crowd at this time. So the wedding day filming checklist is a guideline. We do leave a section in there for notes for you to fill out if there are anything that's out of the ordinary. Now, please make sure you fill that out if there's anything that's out of the ordinary, such as equipment either broke or this moment happened, which is good for the editor to know. And any other things that make sure that you cover your basis. Now, if you missed a moment on the wedding day checklist, make sure you put in the notes why it happened. That way we can protect you and talk to the couple about what happened. Now, as long as it's not negligence, I can assure you, we always have your back. So do make sure you list things like that in the notes so that way we have all the ammo and even other details that we need to know to make sure that we can make the best video for the couple. With that said, I wanna thank you so much guys for putting your energy, giving us your time, and I really look forward to working with you guys in the future and I would look forward to seeing the video. If you have any questions, concerns, or thoughts or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to our team and we'll be happy to answer anything you have. Now, it's off to shooting.